Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is part 3 of the self-driving car with lane detection using Raspberry Pi. In this video, we will warp our image to get a bird's eye view of our lane. This will help us better understand the amount of curve present in the lane. So let's get started. Step two is basically warping. Now, what is warping and why do we need it? So let's have a look at the concept of warping. So warping basically is that if we have an image that is not taken from the top view, it is a little bit tilted. What we can do is we can convert it as if it was from the top. We also call this as bird eye view. But the thing is, why do we need this? So if you think about this intuitively, if you're looking at the road from an angle, it will be hard to determine where which way the curve is and how much of the curve is present. And if you are looking from the top, it will be much easier to tell where the curve is and how much curve we have. So this is why we are going to warp our image. Now to do that, we are going to use the warping function in OpenCV and we will also add a few track bars so that we can adjust manually uh, the exact points of our warping. So first we are going to go to our utilities and over here we are going to write our warping function. So we are going to say that warp image and then we are going to send in an image that we want to warp and then we will send in the points and the final width and the final height that we need so what are points one and what are points two so if we go back to our image so what are points one and what are points two so if we look at our image again so these are basically point one. So point one is all the points that we have on the original image. So this one, two, three, four are the uh, point one. And the second points are basically what we want them to be. So we want to make this point zero, zero. So this will become zero, zero. We want to make this the width and zero. So this will become width and zero. So these are basically your point one and point two. So here we will write, first of all, our points one. So we will write points one is equals to numpy dot float, numpy dot float 32, and then we will send in our points. Now these points are coming from the user. As I've mentioned before, we will be doing it manually. So we will have a look at how we can do that later on. So the next one will be points two. And over here, we are going to define numpy.float. And then we are going to write down the value. So the first one will be zero, zero. And then the second one will be width and zero. And then the third one will be zero and height. And the fourth one will be width and height. So these are the second points of our image. So then we are going to create a matrix uh, that will relate these two together. So that is known as the transformation matrix. So we will write here matrix is equals to cv2.get perspective gets perspective transform and then we are going to send in our points one and then points one and then points two so once we have this matrix that relates these points one and points two we can easily convert any of the points from image one to convert it into image two and we can also inverse that and we will see how we can do that too so then we will write that our image warp is equals to cv2 dot warp perspective and then we are going to send in our image then the matrix and then we will send in the width and the height. 
So lastly, we will return this. So we will say return image warp. So let's go back. And over here, we are going to call this function. So after we have performed the image threshold, so let's write here. Let's write here. This was step one. And then this is step two. So in step two, we are going to get our image warp, which will be equals to, we will say, utilis dot get a uh, warp image and we will send in our image and then we will send in our points and then the width and then the height but how do we know all of these uh, values so to get these first of all the width and height are fairly easy so we will write here that our height and then our width and then our channels are basically equals to image dot shape so the last thing we need are the points so the points that we have to define and send in to our uh, warping now to get these points we are going to use track bars and as i've discussed before the track bars basically they move around and give us values in real time so they are pretty similar to what we have used here in the color picker so you define uh, these track bars and in the real time you are getting the values from it using the get track bar position. So here we have create track bar and then we have get track bar. So this is very common so I will not write the whole code again uh, to actually run this. So I have written it beforehand and uh, what it requires is it requires three different functions. So let me copy that here. So first of all we have initialized trackbar so basically what this does is it creates a window and it adds these track bars to it and it gives it the width and the height the maximum width and height and uh, here we are defining the width and the height so the t stands for target so width target and height target and it will also call a function when uh, there is a change in the trackbar. So we don't need to do anything when that happens. So we are going to define a function by the name nothing and we will pass it nothing. And we will just say pass whenever it's called. And then we are going to define a function where we are going to get the values in real time. So here we will get the value get trackbar position of whatever we have input and then it will convert it into these points as we have seen before so it is zero zero will be the first one which will be width top and the height top then width zero will be this width minus width top and height top so all of this is done and it sends us these points so this is uh, not very crucial to the project. You can simply write down the values as well. But because we want to make it a little bit easier to debug and tune, that's why we are using these track bars. If you want to know more about this, I have covered this in one of my previous videos on how to write all of this code. You can have a look at that. But uh, this is not very crucial to the project. So we can move along without getting into too much detail. So here we will call the function utilis dot initialize track bars and we have to send in the initial values of the track bars um, so once we run for the first time those are the values that will be entered so we will write here initial uh, track bar values so for now we can give it anything later on we are going to change these values to whatever is required so we will put 100 100 100 and 100 so we will send this in and during uh, our while loop when this is running we are going to get our values so to do that we will say that our points is equals to utilis dot get what was it uh, it was value track bars so this will give us the points and then it will send it to the warp 
and now what we can do is we can display our verb image so we can copy this and paste and then we can write here image verb and then we can write here verb so if we run this now we are getting an error must not be a string not a list let's go back here and oh okay so there's a mistake I forgot to write 32 so if we run that again so now we are getting the warped image this is our threshold and this is our video so this is not looping so actually for the time being we can add the code for looping so I can just copy this this is the part in the color picker script uh, it just checks which frame we are at if it's reached the maximum frame it will run it again so I can just copy that in the while loop so it keeps running so if we run that again is not defined so we can define it at the top here as zero so if we run this again it should keep looping so now we can see that we have our trackbar values and all of them are at 100 so if we move this around you will see the effect on the image warp so you can see here so if we put it at 0 0 now this one should be at maximum so if we put that at maximum you can see that this is our original image and if we start applying some warp you can see that it changes so it is changing in real time but it is very hard to actually know what is going on uh, at this point if we don't know where our points are so what we will do is we will add our points to our image so we would know where our actual points are so it will be easy to debug so in the utilities we will go and we will write a new function draw points and we will send in an image that we want to draw the points on and then we are going to send in our points that we want to draw so here we will say that for so we basically have to loop through these points and we have to draw them one by one using circle method so we can say that for x in range of uh, 4 we are going to write cv2.circle and we want to write it on our image and then we are going to send in our points that we want to use so we are going to say that points at 0 and then 0 and then we are going to say points at 0 and then 1 this will give us the first points and then because we want to loop it again and again we will change the zero by x so we will write here x so it will go one by one and it will give us the values but these are floating values and it requires integers so we are going to write here integer we will convert this into integers so once we have done that we are going to go let me just check the brackets if they are correct yes so then we are going to give it a size let's say 15 and then we are going to give it a color so let's say we will do red and then we have to give it the thickness we want to fill it so we will write cv2 dot filled and lastly we are going to return our image return image and we can display this so we will go back and we will say that image warp points is equals to utilis dot draw points and we will send in our image we want to put it on the original image so that's why we are sending image and then we are going to send in our points and lastly we can copy this and we can paste this here and then we can say image warp points and we will say here warp points 
so if we run this now and there we have it so we are getting our points so right now we have only two points the height of the bottom one seems wrong oh they are at the same point that's why okay so if we move them around so now we can see where we are actually warping uh, to get our value and it has been applied on the main image as well which is not good so let's fix that first so what we will do is we will copy our image so we will write here image uh, copy is equals to image dot copy and this image we will use to send in and give us our value so there you go so we don't have the final one now and now we can move our values to get our points so the idea is that we are going to move it around until we get our warped image so I think yeah something like this will be good oh it's opposite because I think yeah, this is supposed to be the top one and this is supposed to be the bottom one so this is supposed to go down so this will be like this and this one here we can decrease the width of it and there we have it so this now is a verbed image of our main video so you can see that we are getting the top view and now we can use this to actually determine the amount of curve that we have so now we don't want to change this every time we run so that's why we had where is it the initial yeah the initial track bar values so that's why we have this so we can enter the values here so we have what are the values so 102 so I will write it here 102 then we have 80 then we have 20 and then we have 214 so again you can change these values later on based on um, yeah so if we run it again you can see that now we are getting the direct values so the direct warp of our image without changing the values now the idea here is that you don't want to go too far so what I mean by that is that the the height should not be too far because we don't want to know what is the curve later on we want to know what is the curve right now so we want to keep it very small area not too much so you can call this region as region of interest so that region of interest should be minimum because we don't want to go too far on how much curve is present afterwards we want to know what is the curve present right now so we will keep that like this so this was step two and now we will move on to step three uh, but before we do that we need to change in our uh, image so we as we mentioned before our image should be black and white so instead of sending in our image we are going to send in image threshold so if we run that again and there you go so this is our verb image from which we are going to find the curve uh, present in our image so this is it for today's video in the next part we will use the histogram method to find the amount of curve present in our lane now if you like the video give it a thumbs up and i will see you in the next one